1981. What a wondrous year. Raiders of the Lost Ark was released. Ronald Reagan became president. MTV launched. And of course, Namco released perhaps its two most popular arcade titles, Ms. Pac-Man and Galaga. Now for this review, I'll start off by reviewing Ms. Pac-Man and then look at Galaga. The reason I'm doing this is because the structure of Ms. Pac-Man is very similar to the original Pac-Man, as well as the fact that Galaga has more going on and would involve much more detail than Ms. Pac-Man needs. Now, as I have stated in the previous review, I believe that Ms. Pac-Man is a much more enjoyable and better game than Ms. Pac-Man. But why is that? Well, to start off with some minor details, the maps in the game are set up differently than in Pac-Man, as the maps change color depending on how far you are in the game. You start off in a pinkish maze, but it will later change into green or some other color. As for Miss Pac-Man, she controls just the same as Pac-Man, except for the fact that she's much faster than Pac-Man. This addition to the gameplay, for me at least, is the most exciting part of the game. Now don't get me wrong, Pac-Man's speed was just fine in the original game, but after playing with Pac-Man, it feels like taking a huge step back. The objective in the game is the same as Miss Pac-Man. Eat all the pellets, seed the ghosts, etc. But in addition to the improved gameplay, the presentation is top-notch up to this point. I already touched on the colors of the map changing, but even the music from the opening jingle... ...to the cutscenes, it feels just so much more upbeat and makes the experience much more fun and memorable. Now after rambling on about how Miss Pac-Man is so much fun, let's turn to Galaga. Fun fact, Galaga is actually a sequel. Yes, a sequel to another space shooter Namco release called Galaxian. Now all you really need to know is that Galaxian is basically like Space Invaders but with better graphics, sound design, and controls. Now on to Galaga. It plays pretty much like Space Invaders and Galaxian. You can move from left to right and shoot by pressing fire. However, Galaga was able to change up the formula by having the enemies appear on the screen in rows and gradually fly down to attack you. It is in these moments where you could possibly get your ship captured by a tractor beam on these green alien things or whatever, and you begin your next life. But it's not all over. If you're able to free your ship from the tractor beam beaming alien, then your captured ship joins your current ship and you have twice the firepower. Yeah, take that, take that, yeah! Galaga's presentation is a huge step up from Space Invaders. In the background you can actually see stars which makes the space-like experience more realistic. It doesn't have much music, but I can tell you I can't get enough of that opening jingle. Awesome. Overall, Ms. Pac-Man and Galaga are not just good video game sequels, but good video games, period. From their improvements in gameplay and presentation compared to their original counterparts, both are essential arcade experiences. Like Pac-Man, both games have had their fair share supports, the most faithful ports at least being on the NES. However, these ports aren't entirely faithful or ideal. For starters, the official Ms. Pac-Man game on NES has some issues in terms of its sound and gameplay, with Ms. Pac-Man being way too slow compared to her arcade counterpart. There was also an unofficial release of the game by Tengen, but it can't display the entire map on the screen, which could cause some issues if you run into ghosts. Galaga on NES is one of the better ports, but the sound on the opening jingle is a little different, but it still is enjoyable to hear. If you are interested in playing the games today, the best option is either on the Xbox Live Arcade or the Nintendo Switch Namco Museum, but as of now, only Galaga can be played on the Switch. Speaking of the Switch, we next tackle the video game juggernaut and my favorite video game company of all time, Nintendo, when we look at their first big arcade hit, Donkey Kong. Until then, this is Arcade Chronicles.